In this video and short demo, we'll be discussing how to use the SQL Database Query Editor in the Azure portal. Microsoft Azure offers tons of features and services. In some cases, we need to execute queries in the Azure portal without SQL Server Management Studio. How is this possible and how can we do this? This is what we're going to take a look at now. The SQL Database Query Editor in the Azure portal is a feature that allows us to access Azure databases and execute queries in a browser. This tool is very handy for simple database operations in the Azure portal. The most important advantage of the Query Editor is that we can execute queries without the need to leave the Azure portal itself. Say you get a call from a client and they tell you about some problem and SQL Server Management Studio is not installed on the nearest computer where you can solve the problem. At this point, SQL Database Query Editor can be a lifesaver. The fact is that SQL Database Query Editor cannot take place of SQL Server Management Studio and it is not a competitor to SSMS. If you're already familiar with writing queries in SSMS, you'll feel right at home in the in-browser query editor. Many common queries can be run in this editor, such as a create take new table, display table data, edit table data, create a stored procedure, or drop a table. You have the flexibility to execute partial queries or batch queries in this editor, and by utilizing syntax highlighting and error indicating, this error makes the editor makes writing scripts a breeze. The query editor is more useful for simple CRUD, create, read, update, and delete operations. The first thing that you have to do before executing any queries against your database is you must connect to the database, and this requires you to log in either with your SQL Server or Azure Active Directory credentials. If you are the Azure Active Directory admin for this SQL Server, you'll be automatically logged in when you first open the Query Editor using AAD Single Sign-On. So in this short demonstration, we will show you how to connect using Query Editor in the Azure portal, show the Object Explorer, show the Edit Data option, creating a new query, opening in a query, saving a query, and creating a table and dropping a table. In this demo, we'll look at the connection settings of the Query Editor in the Azure portal the query editor is placed under the database main tab and basically how to notify that is you see that we have a SQL database, a SQL server, we have our subscription. The easiest way to locate this is if you go to a database in this case, there's two ways to do this. We can go right to it in our pane here. If you for some reason could not find it uh, just looking at the pane, you can also do a search and using the letter Q starts this and limits anything that has matches that. So here we also see the query editor option available. We're going to have to click that. In the connection settings screen, the query editor allows us three types of authentication. We have SQL Server authentication, Active Directory password authentication, or Active Directory single sign-on. For this demonstration, we will be using SQL Server authentication. So we have to enter our credentials here. I already have my username entered. I'm entering my password. And then say OK. The query editor has a very basic design. On the left side, you can find the Object Explorer for tables, views, and stored procedures. So if I expand these out, you'll see that we have tables, we have views, and we have stored procedures in our database PW Insurance. With the login button here, we'll have several buttons across the top. But with the login button, I could potentially log in using different credentials or in a different way. The Edit Data option allows you to edit potentially data in a table. So if I select a table here and I select edit data and preview, what this will do is it's going to prompt me saying, hey, we'll let you apply this to your current subscription. Being a data professional, this is not necessarily something I would recommend, but there might be a testing scenario where you want to actually potentially alter the data, but it's not necessarily my favorite feature of this, but it is possible. You could create a new road, discard anything like that. So right now I'm just going to discard those changes. I'm going to close that. So just writing a couple of queries to show you some of the functionality here. I've already pre-written some of these queries. So I got a top 100 from my claims.claim table. So if I run that, it's down going to return the top 100 rows down here in my results pane. It'll also tell me what you've done here in your messages. Let's say I already had a query that I had written earlier, but I wanted to open it. I come in here and use my open query option. It's just a simple browse to the location on your system. In this case, I've got some other queries I want to open up. I'm going to say OK. And now, 
uh, we have additional queries that we could potentially run within this. This is our first query that we ran earlier. We also have the ability to create tables. We also have some ability to do some other items. In this demonstration here, what we're primarily going to do is we're going to create a simple table. It's going to have a primary key and a couple of uh, columns, our username and a favorite location. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'm highlighting this so it's only going to execute this co code block here. So I'm going to run that. It's going to tell me, hey, where you exceeded. I did not do any rows. And how do we know that that succeeded? I'm going to go ahead and highlight this to see if it actually returns anything. Our results, we should, should expect no results here. And also, I'm going to come in here and insert a couple of rows into that table. As you'll notice, this is a little bit different than your standard SQL. If we were doing this on Management Studio, we'd have potentially values in, on two rows here. I'm going to actually execute this query and ins insert a couple of rows into my table that I created. And then if I execute this query, we actually see that those records were here. And I could potentially uh, go in and do those edits if I chose to. Since I'm not really wanting to keep this table, I can also highlight my drop table statement. I execute and run that. If I refresh, I should not see this table in here. And just to make sure that it's not there anymore, I'm going to go ahead and just execute this and I'm going to get that, hey, you don't have the table there anymore message. In this Azure Everyday video, we took a look at the SQL Database Query Editor and the Azure Portal. If you want to hear more from Pragmatic Works about Azure, click the link below for more information. We would love to talk to you about Azure. Thank you for watching this Azure Everyday video. Have a great day.